Have you heard Bobby's tunes? Excuse me. They're great. Excuse me. Yes, Tony. That's it. I'm Tony, not Bobby. <laughs> I don't know what you're telling me, Bobby this, Bobby that, Bobby the other. Well, why didn't you bloody ask for Bobby then? <laughs> 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 What shall I say about the Irish? The utterly impractical, never predictable, something irascible, quite inexplicable Irish. I suppose it's been my attempt to explain, or at least attempt to define the Irish, that's kept me coming back here every year since I graduated college. Oh, except there was that one year, we're, we're not gonna talk about that. Can, hey, can we take that photo down? Anyway, I'm Irish. My great-grandmother is a Monaghan from Northern Ireland, and my great-grandfather is a McCarthy from Ken Mayer in Southwest Ireland. My sister is a professional painter who paints bottles of Irish whiskey for a living. So any reason for me to get back to Ireland is reason enough for me. Our team of misfits landed at Dublin at 6 a.m., just in time for the Irish sun to greet me as its rays splintered off the cast iron ribs of the famous Halfpenny Bridge. You really get a sense in those early morning hours that this inexplicable Ireland reveals itself to those who seek to learn about its treasures and there's no bigger treasure in Ireland than its Irish whiskey. This trip is a story of Irish whiskey in Tullamore. Jet lagged as we were, no time to check into the hotel. In two hours, the oldest bar in Ireland was gonna open. On the west bank of the Shannon River in central Ireland is an unassuming pub called Sean's Bar. You'd never guess this bar is over a thousand years old until you walk into this legendary fossil. Now, as I said, we're dated by the National Museum, certified by the Guinness Book of World Records, the oldest pub in Ireland, the oldest pub in the British Isles, and the oldest pub in the world still in existence. Continuously being a bar here from 900 until present day. And it, what you have in the cabinet here is part of the old walls, which are made of what's called wattle and wicker which is interwoven hazel sticks held together with horse hair and clay. And that's actually what the whole premises is still made from. That's in there, that's what is there. Old barter coins help date the establishment back to 900 AD. Sean's current owner, Timmy, was kind enough to let me pour my first pint of Guinness. Well, you can have my job anytime, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we sat down in this cozy artifact, stoked the open fireplace, and raised a glass of Tully to, you know, the Vikings who used to drink here. So we landed about two hours ago. And instead of going to bed, we went to Sean's Bar, which is the oldest bar in Ireland and the world. This is the best glass of Irish whiskey I'm ever going to have in my life. So I'm peaking right now. People know me know I'm not really an itinerary guy. So when our guide, Tim Herlehy, he's the American ambassador for Tullamore Dew, said something like, uh, so shall we get back to the castle and shower up? I, um, I thought he was joking because we're not like really staying at a castle, are we? We're staying here. Nestled in the hills between Dublin and Limerick is Kennedy Castle. The story of the castle is one of battle and siege dating all the way back to the 6th century. The castle was under Gaelic and then English control until the 1600s. It had already been destroyed and rebuilt three times when it was leveled by the Republican forces during Ireland's Civil War in 1922. It was later rebuilt again by a government grant, and now it's a hotel. Because the castle played theater to so much bloodshed, death, and destruction over the years, stories of paranormal activity are fairly common on the grounds. I heard this place is haunted. You're not saying anything. Look at you. Nothing's been seen for a long time. So we're good? We're okay. There's a tall monk dressed in black. He haunts the banquet hall, and he's haunted the thing since the 11th century. Apparently he's a pretty good dude though, even providing a lucky few with prophecy advice. Then in the main hall, tortured sounds. Irish banshees dressed in green and red hover over the beds waiting, the staff says, for an imminent death. With so many eyewitness accounts of apparitions, Kennedy Castle is ranked the number two most haunted castle in all of Ireland. Whatever that means. Look at this, this is a real Druid circle. <laughs> this is where all the spirits swirling around in the ether 
come to hang out. Nobody summoned shit, by the way. Yeah. Luckily, they gave me the main chamber in the castle to sleep in. Um, I wasn't concerned at all. Good night, everyone. But I have to thank the staff at Kennedy. They were amazing. Time to try and get some sleep. Tomorrow, we're going to Tullamore. The first written records of Irish whiskey are found in the annals of the Clonmacnoise, dating all the way back to 1405. It was first distilled by Irish monks, initially for medicinal purposes, but they quickly discovered the recreational side of the spirit. The Tullamore Distillery was established in 1829, only 30 miles from where the monks first distilled the original eight bowls of malt. Tullamore Dew built their new distillery in 2014 to produce malt and pot still whiskey. It's a state-of-the-art distillery, but you feel like you're walking into a traditional Irish living room, mostly because it is a living room. Our tour guide, Kevin Piggott, explains a new chapter in Tullamore Dew as a place seeking out new stories, new tales to add to the legend. Also, this living room has one hell of a view. How, how many liters are brewed out of just this right here? space, do you know? This distillery here, we make malt, single malt and single pot still, two components that go into the blend. And the adjacent facility, we make the grain, which is like a sweet sort of style of whiskey. All three components form Tullamore. And those are the three elements of Irish whiskey? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So grain, malt and pot still, they're your three. We make all three on site, we blend them together. We have a capacity of 12 million litres of absolute alcohol. At the moment, we're selling 13 million bottles a year. You have to lay down stock for multiple years because you've got 12-year-old whiskies. Because if you're continuously growing, you need stock 5, 10 years out. You've laid down 10 casts that won't be touched for 40 years. Make no mistake about it, it's a facility built on the bedrock of generations of passionate distillers. The smell hits you. Yeah. <laughs> you smell that? This is milling. This is your raw barley and your malted barley. The two of them get funneled down and you crush them in a wet roller mill. Essentially, crack it in a, like a pistachio that you, you're gonna be able to easier access the starch compounds in the grain. Now to the mashing. Three washes of water pass over the mash to draw the starches from the mix, where it's converted into a sugary liquid called wort. And you can see this sort of foaming sugar at the top, and that's the conversion from starch to sugars. 32,000 liters with, three and a, uh, with six and a half tons of grain. Six and a half tons for three and a half hours. Yeah, correct. It's amazing all the work that's being done in this area right now. And yeah. yet it's, it's very peaceful in here. <laughs> the wort is then transferred into the fermentation vessels. It's there they add the magic yeast to convert the sweet wort into a stronger beer called the wash. Oh! <laughs> Just got punched in the face by carbon dioxide. The wash is distilled three times in three different styles of copper pot stills. The handcrafted copper stills are the same design as those in the original Tullamore distillery. Essentially what we're doing here, we're making the pot still whiskey, okay? So we're separating alcohol and water, okay? Alcohol boils off before water, mm -hmm. okay? So the alcohol is coming up and we're leaving the water compounds behind. So we're concentrating yeah. it. At each step of the distilling process, the volume of water is reduced this increases the alcohol strength until you have a new spirit ready for the barrels. First liquid coming off is 44 proof. Next one we got 110 proof. And around the fire side we've got 162 proof. In the distillery we call it uh, moonshine. Uh, in America, right? That's yeah. what you say. Here we call it actually new make spirit. This is the good stuff. You know, the white lightning, the skull cracker, the dynamite, moonshine to the layperson. But it's the purest alcohol in all of Ireland and now it's ready for the barrels. If you ever wondered what 55,000 barrels of whiskey looks like, this is what that looks like. These are uh, white oak barrels from America, stacked seven barrels high. If you're thinking that you've never seen anything like this before, it's because you haven't. After 10 or 12 years, you get a fine Irish whiskey that tastes like freshly picked autumn apples dipped in caramel. Cheers. Cheers. It slips down quite easy considering the high alcohol. Ooh, it depends how acquainted wow. you are with whiskey, but. You know what's amazing about this? It's not just that we're drinking whiskey in the warehouse of Tullamore. 
it's then it's 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes it truly amazing. I can't tell you how many pubs I poured myself into during my week in Ireland, but I do remember the last one I visited. It's one of Ireland's preeminent literary pubs, the Palace Bar. For years, the Palace Bar has hosted poets, playwrights, novelists, and newsmen. There's even a plaque out front honoring some of the most distinguished storytellers who frequented the pub. It has a long history of storytelling. It says so right on the bar. Brendan Behan is widely regarded as one of the greatest Irish writers and playwrights of his time. He's one of those four poets whose name is etched in the plaque. His literature possesses the ability to distill the complex Irish ethos into a straightforward sentiment. Brennan wrote, The most important things you do in the world are get something to eat, something to drink, and someone to love you. If there's one thing my travels to Ireland have taught me over the years, it's that the man or woman having a drink next to you knows something you don't. A story, perhaps. Maybe a song. Something that can inch an uncultured American like myself closer to understanding the Irish experience. Once you talk to the person next to you, raise a glass with them, you actually become a part of it all. For a few brief moments on this trip, I felt like my Irish training wheels were off. And you find yourself in the slipstream of the true Irish culture to really be a part of it all for a minute. Thanks to Telemore Dew for inviting us to your home and sharing your stories. A small gift arrived from us today at your distillery. As you build your next chapter in your history, we're proud to be a small part of it all here at The Chive. Thanks for having me. Can you imagine if your parents had this in their liquor cabinet? I could have been popular in high school. <laughs>